All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Robert Smirking Gun Reviews. Uh, the plan was to continue doing my MCU uh, series, uh, but my Captain America, the first Avenger Blu-ray, is dog garbage. I don't know what happened to it, but the movie keeps skipping. So until I can get a new copy uh, in the next day or so, uh, I'm not going to be able to. I'm not going to continue to do my reviews. But then I remembered something, and something I've been meaning to do is when you look up MCU chronological order and, and when they came out, uh, Punisher Warzone is in a lot of those lists. Now, I don't know if they consider it canon to the MCU. I, I kind of doubt they do. Now with John Bernthal's Punisher on Netflix. But it came out basically the, around the same time as Iron Man. So I figured, why the hell not? I've been meaning to watch Punisher Warzone for a really long time, never seen it. Uh, and with how disappointed I was in the overall story of Punisher Season 2, I kind of wanted to see if this movie is as bad as uh, a lot of people said it was. Critics, anyway. Um, and so we're going to do that today instead of Captain America. So kind of continuing with the MCU series. Uh, I don't know if it's really a road to Avengers Endgame, but <laughs> that's what we're doing. Um, and I don't know why I waited so long to see this movie. I think it was just because at the time I heard so many bad things about it uh, that I just it just kind of drifted out of my consciousness and Iron Man was out and so it was like wow um, but this movie okay so Ray Stevenson uh, is playing Frank Castle this time around we got a, we got a cast that's not bad um, people like the the casting in it on paper is really good. Ray Stevenson does fit the bill of kind of the Brian Michael Bendis looking Punisher at the time I think this was made. Um, and then you've got uh, Dominic West from The Wire who plays Billy Russo in this version uh, aka Jigsaw. Dominic West is a really good actor. I loved him on The Wire. Uh, I've loved him in a, like a lot of stuff that he does. Um, You've got Julie Benz, who's from Angel and Buffy, so fine, whatever. Dexter, most other people would know her from. She's the girl, but, you know, what are you, you going to do? What, they don't give her much to do here. Uh, Wayne Knight from Seinfeld and Jurassic Park is perfectly cast as Micro. When you see Micro in the comics, that's kind of what he is. But he's kind of just not really given much to do here either. But the casting of him is good. Uh, you also have Doug Hutchinson from the X-Files and, like, more, you know, uh, notably, the Green Mile. Doug Hutchinson is usually at least good for a interesting, dark character, like Green Mile's Percy. Uh, it, he's one of the best villains in, in screen history because of that guy. Um, or at least one of the most hateab hateable villains of all time. Um, but in this, oh boy... They must have just said, hey, be as weird as you want. Because that's what he gave him. And, and Doug Hutchinson's a weird guy. If you've ever looked into his personal life, he's, a, he's an odd duck. Uh, and he brings it. And all of this culminates together to make a pretty... Uh, Dash Myhawk, really quickly. Dash Myhawk is in this movie, a guy from uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, The Thin Red Line. Uh, who's usually really good. Really, he, he plays the character Soap from the comics. He's basically a dum-dum. And then you've got this guy who I call the, not the guy that gets kicked in the pit in 300. <laughs> Him and the other guy, they, I, always, I always mix them up. Uh, he plays this other cop. So anyway, just to get into this. So is this movie as bad as people say it is? I can see why people didn't like it at the time. I can see why critics didn't like it at the time. Is this a movie so bad it's good? I would say yes, but also it's pretty good sometimes. Like, just good good. Um, it does get bad. There are some really bad parts in this, in this movie. Um, and so we're going to just say full spoilers if you haven't seen this movie. Uh, the first, like, half of this movie is pretty excellent. Ray Stevenson is giving me more... Punisher goodness than they've done in both seasons of The Punisher on Netflix. I'm sorry, the action in The Punisher seasons one and two are good, but they don't get anywhere near as true to the comic book as this. I even love that they have the logo at the beginning saying Marvel Knights. 
The Punisher Warzone logo looks like the comic book logo. It just feels comic booky, and I was like, okay, that's what we're going to get here. We're going to get a comic book Punisher, which means that the writing, okay, so the writing isn't, let's, it's not Shakespeare, but it is, it reads like, the dialogue reads like straight out of a comic book. And, you know, I'm starting to think that that's all we really should expect from most of these comic book movies in the first place, is we shouldn't be expecting high art. They are what they are. We like them for what they are. I mean, we keep reading them. We keep reading the books because we like the stories, right? So obviously the writing doesn't really bother us that much when we like the book. Sometimes if you like it, you, like, you want to like a book and the writing is so bad you can't. But if the writing was what was holding back these movies, then they would never get made. And they would never make any money. So... The writing in this is not good. There are scenes that they have terrible writing. Like, there's a, there's a scene where all the guys, all the bad guys at the beginning, maybe at the first half hour of this movie, all get stopped by the FBI. The FBI comes in. These guys are all shooting. These mafia guys, they, there's dead bodies. There's a dead FBI agent there. The next scene, the bad guys are not in jail. They don't even explain how they're not in jail. They just were all apprehended by the FBI and immediately the next scene that you see them in, they are free. There is a dead FBI agent sitting there. And even though it's Frank Castle that shot him, you'd still, if you don't have Frank Castle, you have the mob. You pin that fucking murder on them if you have to. They don't just get released so that the guy can have his own plastic surgery. It's beyond stupid. There's a scene where they talk about, uh, they send a patrol car to check on the, the widow, played by Julie Benz, of the FBI agent. They send a patrol car over there because they think the bad guys are headed there. And they say, hey, to Dash Myhawk's character, hey, have you heard from the patrol car? And he's like, no, tried a couple of times, they didn't answer. And that's it. There is no follow-up. There isn't like, hey, man, you didn't think to tell me about this? Hey, why didn't you call for backup? Hey, like, if they haven't called, that's a problem. When cops are going over to somebody's house on a call to check on somebody's protection and safety, and you're not hearing back from them, and you haven't done anything about it, that's really bad. <laughs> it was really shitty writing. Because <laughs> even in the scene, they look like they didn't know they, there should have been more dialogue there. But... And, a, and, and it does get, like, the middle part is pretty awful. I mean, even Dominic West's Jigsaw, uh, who really looks like Jigsaw, not like this bullcrap Billy Russo Netflix version where he's just got a couple of scars. Uh, he, he at least looks like the comic book. He looks gross. He looks terrible. And Dominic West is doing a Batman 1960s overacting William Shatner performance here, which is very different for him because he's usually very much in control as an actor. And this, they just said, go crazy. Be a Batman villain from the 1960s. And that's what he does. Doug Hutchinson and him are just chewing scenery to the point of just absolute R-rated gloriousness. But it is really dumb. It is really dumb and really, really cartoony. It's so cartoony. But bookended in this movie are some really great action sequences that give you... There's action sequences throughout, but everything but the Punisher is absolute bloody brilliance. They really go for the violence, and it's not digital damn blood like they are using nowadays. They're using practical effects to show people getting their fucking heads blown off. People get their faces blown off. There is a guy who, in the toilet, I think it is, near the end of the movie, where Frank Castle comes in, and a guy, this big fat guy, is like sitting there, he's like, you gotta be fucking kidding, and his head, he just shoots him in his, like with two guns, and the guy's head literally explodes. There's a guy who gets his face blown off, so you can see the where his head used to be partially. He punches a dude's face in where it shatters. Like, his whole front of his face just goes away. <laughs> there is limbs getting blown off. You know, Billy Russo, is, he puts, Frank puts him in this like huge recycling thing where glass just tears his face to pieces. 
So if you want to see real Punisher just violence, this is that movie. You have to not take it seriously at all. If you want the touchy-feely Punisher from the Netflix series, you even get a little bit of this here, but mostly that's for that show. There is a touch of heart in this um, where Frank kills the FBI agent not knowing he's an FBI agent, and that carries with him. And dealing the fact that he's trying to help out the widow and her daughter and feeling you know, a connection because of the family he lost with these people, you know, it, it is an element there that they explore, but not so much that you lose the Punisher in it. That's what happened with the Netflix series, is they, they let the emotional side of everything douse that show until it was, became what it is now. And in, in this, it, gives, it still keeps who the Punisher is. He, never, you know, he might question whether or not he wants to keep doing it, but as soon as he has a gun in his hand, he's killing somebody. He is punishing somebody. And so, on that level alone, I am, I am mad at myself for not seeing this movie sooner. Um, because this movie really is, does deserve like a second look at anybody that wasn't satisfied with the Punisher, uh, on Netflix, uh, or the Thomas Jane Punisher, uh, which I thought was all right. This gives me though, like, this is not the best movie in the world by far, but if I want to see a Punisher movie, this is what I'm going to go to now. Um, do I wish that John Bernthal was playing the Punisher in this? Absolutely. Because he would have killed it with this. Um, but it's, Ray Stevenson is fine. Uh, he's, he's really good. And I mean, you don't really need that much from him. Because he's just a fucking scary looking dude who is capable of taking out people in all sorts of crazy ways. Like this. Like, oh my god, he like takes the old man's fucking head off. It is just great. Um, and so I hope that this is a suitable uh, replacement right now until I can get my Captain America review up. Uh, otherwise, if you liked this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all of that jazz. Otherwise, that was Punisher Warzone. I am really glad I saw it. It is stupid, but it's also awesome. So this is Robert Smirking Gun Review saying have a great day, and we will see you next time. Pow. All right.